Hello, I will be talking to you about ROP classification, screening and treatment. The objectives are to learn ROP classification terminology, to understand the ROP screening protocols and to learn about various ROP treatment modalities. What is ROP? ROP is short for retinopathy of prematurity. It is a vasoproliferative disease of the retina seen in preterm and low birth weight babies. It is essential to screen and treat it in a timely manner, else it may cause blindness in both eyes. The international classification of ROP classifies ROP into zones and stages with or without plus disease. There are three zones. Zone 1 is the innermost zone with a radius twice the disc macular distance. It has the most severe disease because only a small area of the retina is vascularized. The next outer zone is zone 2 whose radius extends to the nasal ora serrata. The outermost zone is zone 3 which has the least severe disease. There are 5 stages of ROP. Stage 1 is a demarcation line between the vascular and avascular retina. In stage 2, the line gains height and width and becomes a demarcation ridge. In stage 3, there is extra retinal neovascularization. In stage 4, there is subtotal retinal detachment. It has two types with 4A sparing the macula and 4B involving the macula. In stage 5, there is total retinal detachment. Plus disease is another important terminology which is an indicator of the disease severity. It is indicated by the dilation and tortuosity of blood vessels at the posterior pole. It is also associated with poor pupillary dilation. Pre-plus is a terminology used to indicate dilation and tortuosity less than plus disease but more than normal. Aggressive posterior ROP or AP ROP is a severe disease variant seen in zone 1 or posterior zone 2. It has a featureless junction between the vascular and avascular retina and has severe plus disease. It often has flat neovascularization and can progress rapidly to retinal detachment. It needs urgent treatment. How to detect ROP in time? A ROP screening program is the best way. It is a teamwork between the ophthalmologist and the pediatrician. Screening can be done in the NICU, SNCU or I facility once a week at a fixed time. Regular follow-up is essential till the disease regresses or progresses to a treatable stage. We follow the national ROP guidelines released by the Rashtriya Bal Suraksha Karyakram or RBSK. It suggests that we should screen babies with less than 2000 gram birth weight or less than 34 weeks gestation age. We can screen bigger babies up to 36 weeks gestation age as well with systemic risk factors for development of ROP. The guideline suggests we should screen these babies at 4 weeks or 30 days of birth. In case of very small babies, less than 28 weeks gestation age or less than 1200 gram birth weight, we can screen them as early as 2-3 to three weeks. It is good practice to screen once before discharge from the NICU or SNCU. Indirect ophthalmoscopy by a trained ophthalmologist is the best way to screen for ROP and is the most cost effective model. However, Digital wide field imaging has also become popular as retinal examination can be performed by trained technicians or nurses. It is also a useful tool for documentation to train residents and guide parents about the disease of their child. It has found a lot of use in telescreening models but the equipment is expensive. ROP can be treated by three modalities namely laser photocoagulation, intravitreal anti vegf drugs and vitreoretinal surgery. Laser photocoagulation is a time-tested treatment. The avascular retina is treated by a trained ophthalmologist under monitoring by a neonatologist, pediatrician or anesthesiologist. The early treatment for ROP or ETROP cooperative group has given these guidelines for laser treatment. Intravitreal anti-VEGF drugs like ranibizumab and bevacizumab are rapidly emerging as the first line treatment of zone 1 ROP and AP ROP. They are injected via a sterile technique by a trained surgeon. 
They cause rapid disease regression and are also a useful adjunct to laser treatment. Another huge advantage is that retinal vascularization continues into the periphery which will eventually lead to better visual fields. The resultant refractive error is also lower. However, there are several important limitations which we must know. The effect of the drug is of limited duration and recurrences are observed at 6 to 8 weeks and then laser rescue treatment might be needed. The long term systemic side effects are really not known. There is still a lack of clarity about which drug is better. Though half dose is given, the right dose is still being investigated. How many injections we can safely give is still not known. Moreover, there is risk of injection related complications like infection and cataract due to lens injury. Vitretinal surgery is done in advanced cases. The surgical outcomes are good in stage 4 ROP. However, timely referral is essential in progressive cases. A trained surgeon and vitretinal surgical setup are needed. The surgical outcomes are poor in stage 5 ROP and surgical trial is sometimes done with the hope of obtaining navigational vision. Rehabilitation is important in these cases. The key messages are that ROP is a vision threatening disease and screening is essential to identify treatable ROP in time. Timely treatment has good outcomes. Refer quickly if treatment facility is not available. All these steps can help to prevent ROP blindness. Thank you.